My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest fame, but only trust in Jesus' name.
God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand? We'd like to introduce a new song to you. Uh, This song talking about how God's love is constantly devoted to us. And how because of that reason, his praise will always be on our lips.
we're here gathered in your name. And I ask that you please bless the performances that we're having tonight and just be with us for the Sabbath day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm not being picked up by the microphone. Okay. I am so glad that everybody's here tonight. Um, it's exciting. It's a little bit sad. We are kicking off the first of a group of programs that kind of sum up the year for each of the extracurricular activities. We're honored to be the first one, um, but this means that it's our last performance of the year. And as I think back to the beginning of the school year, uh, when I was a um, rookie drama director, um, at least for this program, um, I, I cannot believe actually how much has filled this um, year. Uh, between our um, Parents Weekend, Academy Days, and just recently we went straight from our Student Week of Prayer drama program, which was the life of David, uh, David the King of Israel, uh, which involved a cast of 80 some people, um, which was just a few weeks ago. And then we moved into our Academy Days program and um, that was a week and a half ago. It feels like, I, it might've been a little bit longer than that, um, right into this program. So I'm incredibly proud of the students tonight and the, um, the, the stuff that they were able to put together uh, with just a short amount of time. But um, I, I have to say that it's been, thank you, it's been something that I've been. I know, I'll just switch them out. I yell at the kids all the time about projecting their voices, so you know I should be able to work without a microphone. Anyway, um, I am incredibly proud of the students tonight. Uh, they have had to come through in a very short amount of time to put this program together. Um, we've tried to make it lighthearted because otherwise I'll get weepy up here, as I do so easily. Um, as I think about all the students that have been a part of drama this year, um, I can honestly say I love every single one. Uh, we have had an enormous group of students and testify this year, and it at first was a little bit overwhelming, but I think as they will all tell you that we have really congealed as a group, and um, everyone is going to be uh, missing the seniors as they move on out of this year. So. Uh, we wanted to keep things a little bit lighthearted. Our program tonight is um, about a door and the way that doors fit into our lives and the things that they represent. Uh, it was originally a longer program, but we um, shortened it for various reasons. And uh, we hope that you get the point tonight, which is that the door is a decision. And every time you open and close the door, you make a decision about what is what you're going to do when you pass through the door, about going in and out of that door. And so we talk about that throughout the program tonight, uh, because the most important decision you make has to do with the door of your heart. And so we hope you get that tonight. We tried to keep it a little bit lighthearted. Like I said, our video um, that we're going to lead into our play with is a video of highlights from the year of drama. Um, when I started editing the video, it was about six hours long. Um, I got it down to nine minutes and uh, left out so many wonderful, wonderful pieces that I wanted to include. Um, so my apologies, I am not a good video editor, but um, it, I think, captures what was for Testify, our top 10 moments of the year. Um, they kind of contributed to those moments, um, and we threw in a few Testify memes just for fun. So I hope you enjoy our video. From there, we're going to move right into our play, which is entitled The Door. Hope you enjoy. go back ain't no explanation of how I saw the light he found me and he set me free and he brought me back to life blame it on the transformation change down to the core this love is real and I can't sit still if my name's not shame no more, no more great God Almighty don't change this great God Almighty he don't change in drama 
swim party was swimming because me and Annabelle went swimming and we like struggled against like that wave pool thing that Miss Scott has in her pool <laughs> and like it was just I was just getting like water it was awesome but I kind of almost drowned but it was all cool like it's all good I never went on a zip line before so that was pretty cool my favorite was food the food uh -huh. <laughs> Miss Scott's a good cook yeah good <laughs> things one was a zip line kind of on some zip line before and that was awesome Two was the food, because that was delicious. And three was hanging out with Miss Scott's cats. Was just getting around, chilling on off of campus and things like that. I liked how being able to just get off campus and be able to go to your house of all things. So. <laughs> improv. Improv <laughs> is improv was my favorite because it gave us yeah like helped us express who we are and we didn't have to remember scripts and it was just something that we can like you know make up in our mind and let us have fun with it. Oh, oh, well, oh, it's so much. Oh, yeah, look at me. Oh, 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 I'm not a I'm ready? Yes. Okay. My I'm always <laughs> recording. Always. <laughs> My favorite. Are you recording now? <laughs> I am because I'm always looking for clips. <laughs> so. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> I can't not. Oh, good. Come <laughs> in. <laughs> we We're video. practicing. Why is that? Get in. Days when I was doing, I forgot the name of the play. The job. I know. I'm a really good worker. Okay. Hello, hello. I bet you guys are not dramatic at all. Can we like <laughs> Crazy uncle, you know, that's been like in Vietnam and 
all those other wars and you know out once in a while. Is that that crazy um, part of you? Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't do that very often. What'd you say? Oh, she's a she's a good girl. Wow. Yeah. Hey, no phone, girl. Phone's got a cord, a long one, and you plug it into the one got buttons. You, you press the buttons. Phone, phone, my foot, Nikayla, Nikayla. <laughs> what? What'd you say? Oh, well, never mind. You can't hear me anyway. Stop. postulating with Mr. Van Fossen in the presence of my fellow peers. I enjoyed this moment because of the um, increasingly applicable elements within our conversation. It was uh, multilinguatically good. For sure. So easy. Definitely. The story was convincingly versatile to though it left me with a Rob Dignagian's sense of indiculation due to its lack of impactful insight Ooh, and knowledge. Yes, but if you consider its opportunistic use of linguistic count, and to Danubian and his genius, <laughs> Brandon, there are very few who would even infer Antonovian as a relevant topic of discussion in any conversation with intellect due to its ease of becoming super angulated and obtuse, thereby relegating its status to that of a lecturacious vertical stone structure. <laughs> Derek, you speak like a sub-engineer. I wish you'd disambiguate, or at least have squatulate, rather than fluid the air with your effluvia. My Brandon, no matter what you say, I'm in Boolean about my linguistically philosophical overtures, supporting the claim that the general mediocrity of our friends renders them unable to cooperate with our informal exchange of ideas. I concur with your enlightened opinion. I'm kind of May I help you? Yes, I have this huge research paper due, and my internet is like super slow. Do you have any public computers that like I could use? Yes, but we've been having some issues with them lately. If you have your own device, we can give you the Wi-Fi login, and that's much more reliable. Even better. Just go through that door and turn left, and it's the first desk on your right. 
But don't go to the right, because then you'll end up in the children's section. You don't want to do that. Thanks. stores just like this one every day, and we don't stop to think about what they do or what they can mean. But whether you realize it or not, a door gives us all types of opportunities, some good, some bad. You see, when you open or close a door, you are making a purposeful decision, and once you do, you have to live with the consequences of that decision. Tonight we will examine a variety of moments that revolve around the doors we open and close in our lives. As you ponder these stories, we pray that you will realize the significance of the choices each of us makes. You know things are really bad around here. I mean, the stacks are falling, the ceiling's leaking, the books are mowed, the computers are old as you are. I mean, we don't even have a handicap entrance, which means it's just a matter of time before we shut down. And we only have one key. And we only have one key. Thank you. We only have one key. Yes, we only have one key. No problem. Which means if we lose it, the library, we're done. We can't, we can't find it. We can't get in or out of the library. Yes, we cannot get in or out of the library. Thank you, Steph. Are there any empty tables? Um, it looks like we only have this one right now. I'm sorry. The library is so broke that they only have one good table. tell you where to find the door anyways. Well, what kind of library doesn't have librarians? A trash one. I'm sorry, can we help you? Yeah, I just need to know where the reference section is. Just go through the door, turn left, and go past the computers, and you'll run right into it. Okay. And again, don't turn right. You don't want to end up in the children's section. section. Trust me. Thanks. I'm definitely not interested in going there. Maybe we can hope that at least our library is safe enough for children to come. They're here again. We just have to deal with you for now, Annabelle. Uh huh. Hi, librarians. Hi, librarians. Hi, girls. Hi, librarians. Ugh. Don't fall for their lies, okay? Deep inside, they're evil, okay? Like. The moment they step into the children's library, they turn into like evil beasts, okay? Ravage. They just go crazy. Um, Annabelle, oh. what do you want us to do about it? I mean, they're two children. We can't deny two children, even if they are two evil beasts. Um, yes, you can. Tell them to quietly go inside and then quickly go outside. Tell them that the library is temporarily closed. Tell them that we're on a library holiday. Tell them anything to keep them out of the library. But those are all lies. We, we can't do that. I mean, how bad can two little girls be? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, they're cute. Yeah, laugh at me. I'm crazy. Oh, I'm overdramatic. Yeah, I make everything big deal. No, I don't, okay? The moment that you see me in a pile of Dr. Seuss's and I'm torn apart, then and only then will you understand, okay? Don't, don't ever... I dare say, 
the library is in a potentially risky situation with its too secure door. But often, we depend on doors to keep us safe, to provide a place of refuge, at least that's what we expect them to do, to close out the world and protect us from the evils that lurk outside there. Specials? Yeah, you can bring your friend along. I'll make it better. <laughs> Don't listen to them, Rahab. They're only speaking like that because they're wretched themselves. Not too wretched to be taught a lesson. Alice, stop! Ooh, she's coming, Jalam. <laughs> you bet I'm coming. And I'm gonna drag your filth over here and teach you how to treat a lady the way your mother should have taught you. Holy oh, oh, filth! there! Yeah, you talk big for a small person. Don't let the size fool you. A hornet packs a lot of pain in his tiny bite. I think she's serious, Nizza. <laughs> Ala! Ooh. Don't! Oh, how could you say that? Lucky, I'm so scared you of. fools better be afraid. If you come here, you're gonna get some trouble. Stop! Every time I go out of the house, I just want to go back inside. I regret it every time. But you always talk about feeling trapped. I do, but there's no refuge anywhere. There must be somewhere. We just have to find it right now. I think I'm gonna go lay down. I'll talk to you guys later. <gasps> no, no, please don't, don't. They'll come looking for us. We need your help. Who are you? We're, we're, we're visitors. Yeah, that, that's no, it. No, you're Israelites. You're spies. You're gonna hurt me. Please don't no, hurt no, me. No, no, we're not gonna hurt you. We don't want to hurt you. We, we just need a place to hide. Uh, and, and quick! Uh, I don't... I don't know where to go. Please hurry. Don't you have a hiding spot somewhere? Um, uh, the graves, yes. Rahab! Rahab! <laughs> where are they? Um, excuse me. Who are you looking for? We're looking for the spies. What spies? Why are you looking here? You know what this place is. Because we saw them come this way. You're not hiding anything, are you? I have nothing to hide, Mizza. So you wouldn't mind if Jalam looked? Um, I actually do mind, but as usual, you don't care. You know, this is just like you. You do your job watching the city, but you even suspect law-abiding citizens. How thorough of you. She got nothing. Nothing. Excuse the door. <laughs> Thank you so much. You saved our lives. Yahweh led us to this place because he knew it would be a place of refuge for us. Wait, let me come with you. Don't leave me alone. I've seen what Yahweh can do. I've seen him stop the flow of the great river. Yeah, I saw him free the Egyptians. Just, they're, they're going to burn this city down and I don't want to burn with them, please. We can't. It's too dangerous. We have to go up the side of the mountain and travel for the night. We wouldn't make it with you. Look, Rahab. Yahweh will surely bless you. Here. Hang this red roof from the from your window, and anyone who's in this house will surely be blessed. Anyone? Like, no matter what they do or how they are? Yes, everyone. You've been a safe place for us. You and everyone you care about will be saved. Thank you. I'll, I'll show you through the window.
Okay, so the door to Rahab's house didn't start out as a place of refuge. It was a place that led to sin and guilt and regret. And yet, God's plan was fulfilled through this woman behind her door. Her home, filled with all its baggage, became a place of refuge to the spies and opened up a whole new life for her because she grabbed the opportunity when it came to her door. In that choice, she opened the door to her life to God. She recognized that what she had was not what she wanted, and when given the chance to make a change, she took it. Sometimes, though, we fail to recognize um, an opportunity when it's before us, or we imagine a situation that's not even there. This is the life. Let me get a bite. Chief, there's a hostage t situation in the library. Our library? Yes, our library. Multiple hostages and suspects. Did you hear about that? Nope. Hmm. Chief, aren't you going to do something? Well, all right. I guess I'll go check out your crisis. It's not my crisis, sir. It's... Well, do I hear insubordination? No, sir. Can we just go? Does it not look like I'm walking? Nikosi, is this walking? Yep. Looks like it to me. <laughs> All right. <sighs> For later. setting up a security perimeter, making sure there are no outliers. Are you, me? Are you chief? I'm pretty sure this here badge says I'm chief. Can you call see what does this here badge say? Yep. You're chief, sir. Move over. I need to secure the perimeter and check for outliers and other stuff. Hey, I need to talk to terrorists. Are there any terrorists in there? <laughs> yep, sounds like a hostage takeover to me. Jeffrey, get reinforcements. Davis, do something useful. Give me some donuts. <laughs> All right, guys, people do her right now. Okay, let's see this. Let's see this. Uh, okay. Okay. Stevens! Scare perimeter. Thurman, what are you doing? What are you doing? Make a bear. Bob, feel him out. Feel him out. Feel him out. Call, call Washington right now, okay? This is serious right now, all right? Get Washington off phone right now! Excuse me, sir. Who and what are you doing in my crisis? I'm Agent Jeff, Federal Bureau of Investigation, U.S. Government. <laughs> so, who and what are you doing in my way? No, 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 no. No big time FBI agent's gonna come over here and take over my crisis. <laughs> hey, Chief, here are your donuts. Hey, that's a great idea. Why don't you take your donuts and go back to your little office and, and watch TV and let the professionals handle this. <laughs> um, excuse me, sir. Seems like we have a problem. What's the problem here? Well, there seems to be some confusion as to whether this is actually a hostage situation. And there is some hostilities from the locals. And even disagreement within the security area. What you mean? Basically means that they're just locked inside the library. So, this falls under native jurisdiction. Native? Native? Did she just call me native? <laughs> yep, here's so. <laughs> All right, get out of here. Just... Here. 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 Here.
Mariners now. All right, we got more important things to do. Yep. Yeah, that's very embarrassing. Oh, what? What was it? Oh, it's just native. Yeah, it's just a joke. Yeah. Of course, don't. You just call me native? Yep. And get out of my crisis, Davis. This, these library hui albums are just fucked up. They, this ain't a job for a chief. Find a way to get them out. Me and Nicole are going back. We'll finish CIS. SCI. Whatever it is. <laughs> wow. So I think the more we see of this library, the more of a mess it becomes. I have no idea what to say about it. I mean, how is it that in 2017, a library only has one working door and one working key? How is it that nobody's done anything about it? Uh, I'm, not even gonna go the rest, I'm not even going to go the rest of the way there. But there is something I want to point out to you. Just like how their library depends on one, just like how their whole existence depends on one key, our whole existence depends on one choice that we will all ultimately make. We just don't think about it often because we rarely come face to face with it. But when it comes knocking at our door, well, sometimes we're caught off guard, not ready, at least in that moment. We live in a world where life is short and dangerous, but every time God provides us with a way out, all we have to do is take it. So sorry, where are my manners? I, uh, out there is a dangerous place to stay. There are many unsafe places in town. You came to the safest place. Uh, how, how may I serve you? Lot, you must leave at once. The Lord is going to destroy the city. What? Grab your family and come with us. Uh, <laughs> destroy the city? Surely not. Do not be a fool, Lot. You will die if you do not follow us out of the city within the hour. <coughs> we have time to grab your family. Leave your stuff here. Uh, my daughters. Can I go get my daughters? You only have a few minutes. We will only wait a short time. Then we will pull you out. I'll hurry. Listen to me. There is no time. You must come with me now and escape. The city is going to be destroyed. Are you drunk? You know it's bad manners to come to a party drunk. Vermora, I am not drunk. God is going to destroy the city. You must come now. There is no time. Why would I go wandering through the city with you randomly when there's a party going on? Besides, if the city's supposed to be destroyed, I want to go up in a blaze of glory. That will be a lit party. Remora, please. Oh, really, Father, you can't open the door by yourself? Can't Jer you see how busy I am? Jerry, off. Come with me now. God is destroying the city. There is no time. You must come with me. Um, I have a party to plan and like five meetings in Gamora, so that's not going to work. Jariah, there is no time. Please come. You must escape. Well, you're right about the no time thing. I've got I'm, a meeting. I'm late. But come back tomorrow. Jerry, up. I'm so tired. 
It's so late. Anna, listen to me. There is no time. God is destroying the city. If you do not come with me now, you will be destroyed with it. What? Are you crazy? What are you talking about? It's so late. I'm tired. I'm going back to bed. Anna, listen to me. If you do not come now, you will surely die. How can I? What are you talking about? You're being so melodramatic. I have lost both of your sisters. No, come stop. with me. I'm not going with you, okay? I'm tired. Anna, Just let me sleep. Please. Please, no, go. They would not come. Why? Where have you been? Who are these strange men in our house? What is going on? We must go. Grab them and follow us. Please come. Hurry. Hurry. Come with me. Come. The destruction is upon us. That story bothers me so much. I mean, how could these people not recognize a chance to save their lives? especially when it comes straight to their door. But honestly, how are we any different? We all do it. God is knocking at our door every day, offering us help, guidance, giving us everything we could possibly need. But we just push him away, saying, we're fine, we've got it, we're all good. Or maybe we're ignoring an opportunity to share something with someone else, to be the answer they are looking for to tell them exactly what they need to hear, that there's a God who loves them. A dozen times I know your name I know you don't know mine But I won't hold that against you You come here every Friday night I take your order and try to be polite And hide what I've been going through If you look me right in the eye would you see the pain deep inside? Would you take the time? Tell me what I need to hear. Tell me that I'm not forgotten. Show me there's a God who can be more than all I've ever wanted. Right now I need a little hope. I need to know that I'm not alone. Baby, God is calling. Tell me something that might save my life I'm the pastor at your church For all these years you've listened to my words You think I know all the answers But I've got doubts and questions too Behind this smile I'm really just like you Afraid and tired and insecure If you looked me right in the eye Would you see the pain deep inside? Would you take the time? Tell me what I need to hear Tell me that I'm not forgotten Show me there's a God who can be more than all I ever wanted Cause right now I need a little hope Something that might save my 
just like everyone. Jesus, I need you, I need your love to save my life. Tell me what I need to hear. Tell me that I'm not forgotten. Show me there's a God who can be more than all I've ever wanted. Cause right now I need a little hope. I need to know that I'm not alone. Maybe God is calling you tonight to tell me something that might save. Maybe it's cliche to us. We hear it all the time. In religion class, in Sabbath school, in church, midweek, vespers. We know we need Jesus. And we just assume that everybody else knows that too. But what if they don't? What if they need someone to tell them? Are we missing an opportunity to share because we don't know what God is asking us to do? Do we even know what to listen for? In John 10, Jesus described himself as a good shepherd. He says that his sheep know his voice. Perhaps, if you recognize him, we will be more open to hearing what he is trying to say. And perhaps, when he opens the door, we'll be easy, we will easily follow. What you doing? Nothing. You going anywhere or no? Uh, no. That's cool. Where, where is the shepherd? Who's that? Who's who? Who she's talking about? Who's talking? He is. What are you saying? Nothing. Oh, him. Oh, oh. Here he comes. Who come? The one. The one that, that comes. <laughs> Do you know what he's talking about? No. Sheep! 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 Sheep!
We live in a world filled with noise and chaos. We are constantly bombarded by images and messages telling us who we are, what we should do, what we should believe. Sometimes even our own mind plays tricks against us. We allow our past mistakes to enslave us, believing that there is nothing that is ever going to change about our lives, that there is nothing we can do about our situation, and yet, God is always there reminding us that we are his and that he has so much more in store for us. We can't lose that connection. So, um, <laughs> Mrs. Nolan, I see you are leisurely beginning your day. Perhaps an impromptu meeting will improve your efficiency. Um, yes, good morning, Mr. Van Fossen. Uh, we were just about to start, or close, our meeting. Oh, I appreciate your use of uh, space and time to hold a meeting. However, I do believe it encourages a certain casualness to something that should be brisk um, and pointed. Thank you, Mr. Van Fossen. Um, okay. Actually, I wasn't prepared for you to come unexpectedly, but I do recall that we have a key situation and we need upgrading. Oh, surely you're not suggesting that your uh, affiliates are so careless as to expect to lose the key? Oh, no, sir. Oh, no, no, Mr. Van Fossen. Of course not. We have never lost a key in my entire years of working here. No, we just need an upgrading for the key system. It seems, Miss Nolan, that every time I come here, you come to me with a list of things that need upgrading. It seems like you're incapable of coming up with things that make me money. Um, Mr. Van Fossen, this is a public library, and we are in the service of providing, even though we need money, and we can't go on much longer because we don't have the legal requirements. And the county officers have been here three times in the last week and a half, sir. Yes, that sniveling man has come to my office as well. I would greatly appreciate it, Miss Nolan, if you could encourage him not to visit me anymore. Give him um, someone else to disturb. Uh, Mr. Van Fossen, I am not your secretary, nor am I not your security detail, and I am the one who sent him to your office because you don't answer my requests. Miss Phillips, make a note of that. Yes, sir, and about the country officer? Really, Mrs. Phillips, you're failing today? Make a note of that as well. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's it, Aaron, I can't do it anymore, okay? That's it, I am at my limit. These two are done. They are never stepping foot in this library again. Okay. That's it, no more, okay? You understand? Oh, oh, hey, you decide to visit today? Oh, I have a few words of advice for you, okay, Mr. Big Shoes. I hate what you do, okay? I know your little schemes. I know you come here and try to treat us like your little minions. Well, no, nope, not today, not anymore, okay? And you need to start putting in some big time dough into fixing this library because it's got a lot of problems. Oh, might as well start with the children's area. Hmm? How does that think? Um, Annabelle, sweetheart, mm -hmm. now is not the time. Mrs. Phillips? I don't care. Yes, sir, I already did. Yes, Miss Nolan, I do believe this little outburst adequately summarizes this meeting. As a result, I'll be making some drastic suggestions to the board of directors. I would strongly suggest putting out some feelers in the workplace to find someone to replace this. Make a note, Mrs. Phillips. Yes, sir. Stop fraternizing, Mrs. Phillips. Yes, Mr. Van Falken. I am beyond triggered. I am beyond triggered! Okay, triggered is like here. I'm all the way up there, all right? It's beyond triggered. That man triggers me on the daily. I cannot handle it anymore. Dude, can you just say we're Dude. all gonna be out of a job? Yeah. Please set that. Triggered, Miss Hope. Triggered. I said triggered. Okay? But you know what I need right now? I need a good bubble bath with yeah. lavender oils, warm water, and a big bowl of ice cream, mint ice cream, with whipped cream everywhere. And cherries? And, no, I hate cherries. Don't put a cherry on my thing. I like cherries. No. I don't like cherries, okay? I can't do this anymore. Yet. No, 
I know this is not our place, but maybe we should put this whole library and situation to prayer. Oh my goodness. Step. Once again, skirt, skirt. Follow me. Say it with me. Skirt, skirt. Say it. Skirt, skirt. Okay, you don't have to say it. But I, I, I feel like God is not, he's not listening with this library situation. Oh, okay. If he cared about this library situation, all of that would not have happened when Mr. Van Diemen was here. Okay? Like, I can't do this anymore. Hope, I hope y'all can manage. Yeah, Aaron, okay. we can manage. Good, good job. It's a fatal human flaw, our flaw. We assume that if God cares about us, then everything will fall right into place and life will be perfect. We assume that if we walk through the right door, that we will never experience challenges in life. But what if you're looking at it all wrong when it comes to problems? What if there are opportunities to trust deeper, to grow in faith, to surrender? But the reality is that at one point or another, we will all feel as though we are trapped, like we are prisoners with no way out. But there is a way out. It's just that it only comes from one place. Is he dead? I'm not about to poke him hard enough to find out, Flavus. These guys, man, yeah, well, they don't stop yapping when they're awake, so we have to beat them to make them be quiet. But I like it the way things are right now. Peaceful. I've got no problem with peaceful. The people of the way are so troublesome. I haven't had a good night rest since the Pentecost. It makes me wish for a Jewish holiday. These guys aren't Jewish. It wouldn't do any good. The Jews are the ones that are dragging him in front of Herod, so... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, but did you just say the Jewish were important? Uh, <laughs> Only a common enemy would say such a thing. And the Jews aren't my enemy, as long as I get paid and get food. I'm okay. You're one twisted Roman, Portis. Well, I could be more twisted. Uh... <laughs> I am. I feel it. Um, sorry. Portis tends to get a little excited when it comes to punishments. I don't think the council wanted you injured, just a little sore. Thanks. Flavus seems a little uh, eager to make friends. Perhaps you could tell him how sore you are and be joyful together. I would rather talk to you about my friend Jesus. Oh, suddenly I'm getting really sleepy. I'm really tired. <laughs> Does he always fall asleep that fast? Never. In fact, he's the one that's bouncing around the barracks, plotting to take over the world. <sighs> but, excuse me, I'm sorry, but um, since he's falling asleep, <sighs> I think I should go to sleep too. <sighs> Arise, Peter, you have much to do. And much to say. The Lord calls you to stand again in the temple, to the temple court, to tell the people of his new life. Good, I, I was beginning to think th there's something in the water that I should be worried about. The door's, the, the door's, the door's locked. The door is open and you have the keys, Peter. I should not have doubted, but the keys? The keys to the kingdom. 
Peter, you are the rock, the leader of the Lord's people. He has blessed me well. Is the whole way open? The whole way opens for you, Peter. Go to the temple and preach. Will they be okay? They will not have injured the king. No, and flowers will bend to the will from your testimony. Thank you. Gentlemen, I am there for <laughs> something's uh, missing from this general area right here. You know anything about that? He has to be here. I will make him suffer for making us look like fools. <sighs> I don't think that it was him himself that was able to escape. I believe so, Flavius. Something greater transpired here. Come, let us tell the captain. And I really hope they let me keep my head. I've grown quite attached to it lately. <laughs> Do you feel that whoever that guy was, that his God took him out of here? I do, Flavius. We have looked tonight at the door of safety, the door of opportunity, the door of faith, the door of surrender, and the door of release. And in each one of these stories, we have witnessed the power of choice because ultimately a door is a decision. So what does that mean to you? The one door we haven't talked about tonight is the door to your heart. Have you answered God's call? Have you done what he has asked you to do? Are you growing to the person he wants you to be? Do you guys realize how special you are to him? There's only one prize worth having in this life, and it's waiting behind a door for you to take it, waiting for you to share it. It's Jesus, and he's knocking.
really that simple. God's given the students of this school <clears throat> and those beyond, but I'm speaking specifically to those of you here, an enormous amount of talents. People who come to visit, they see the abundance of gifts here and they are impressed and overwhelmed by it. It draws them here. But if you can sing, let your song be about His glory. And if you can speak, let your words be about Him. And everything that we do be about Him. And so each of you will make a decision whether you um, return here next year or if you are moving on to another um, place about what you do with the talents that God has given you. And it is our prayer tonight that you take them and use them for His glory. I'm going to ask Testify to come out behind me um, on the stage as we close with prayer tonight. Since this will be our last time with all of us on stage, um, I'd like to have them join me as we pray. We've had a lot of fun here tonight. We've laughed. We've cried. We've <clears throat> sung. Um, but it really is truly our prayer that uh, the message you get from this tonight is how much God loves you and how much he has given you and how much he wants for you to share that with those that you come in contact with. Please bow your heads with me. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your love, for your sacrifice. It's because of you that we can stand up here and talk about the amazing hope that we have. And particularly in these last few weeks, we've needed to know that. We've needed to be reminded of that. Um, I ask for your special blessing over the students of this school. Um, especially those who um, are moving on from here as we end this school year. Um, I ask your blessing because I know that you've given them an enormous amount of talents. And so I ask that you help them to use those for your honor and glory. Because this small group of students here in this room can change the world. Just like those small group of students that you tutored when you were yourself here on this earth. We're here because of the work that they did. And so I know that the ones that stand here in this room and those that sit in front of me will do something amazing for you. Give them courage, give them strength, give them the, all of the gifts that they need to do that and give them a reminder daily of how much they love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Dismissed. <laughs>